actually started out being more interested in physics than biology, but uh, when I did my undergraduate, I took a class where we studied the evolution of behavior. And for the first time, I realized that actually um, evolution impacted not just our bodies and our physical world, but it could impact how we behave. Um, and that we could study the evolution of our own behavior by looking at the behavior of humans and other species and using that to trace back down our evolutionary tree. I studied electrical and electronic engineering as my undergraduate degree here at Queen's University Belfast and I was exposed to electronic engineering at quite an early age when my father decided to build a small hydroelectric scheme on the river running by our house. So it meant that growing up we had our own electricity supply. So um, I guess my interest in electronic engineering was sparked at a very early age because of that. I, um, I was a social worker working in South Africa um, in, in a nasty period of the AIDS epidemic when we didn't have any any medication and governments and um, and policymakers were desperate to do the right thing but just didn't know what to do and so there was just this absolutely essential need to provide um, high quality evidence um, as quickly as possible and we stepped in and, and tried to do the best we can. So I, I guess I started out as a teacher um, and I did that for eight years, working in disadvantaged schools generally in Manchester. I've always been interested in inequalities, I suppose, in society. Um, and I was really fascinated when digital technology started becoming so much part of our everyday lives. My proudest moment in my academic career has been my chair position, obtaining my chair position in 2010 at the age of 32 in terms of a personal achievement uh, is balancing the life of an academic and that of a young family. As well as my operational role as a principal fire officer, I also conduct research with Cardiff University uh, in collaboration with the National Fire Chiefs Council. And all of my research looks at human error in the fire service and particularly risk critical decision making. And it was that piece that started the nationwide research program that we did with the fire service that helped us to look at how they were making decisions in the field under pressure. Then, when we changed the national policy as a result of that, that was probably one of my proudest moments because I knew that the work that we'd done could go to help people. So my proudest moments are probably events that have never happened because it means that someone hasn't been hurt. I think the proudest moment in my life that something I designed, it was used in a major infrastructure I was very privileged that actually it helped the process and the civil engineers to monitor the tunnels and to make sure these tunnels, they are within the limit of their movement. It's definitely a point in my career. I think I'm really lucky as a primatologist when it comes to uh, role models in primatology. We have such a great array of women as well as men in science. So I think having more visible representation, it's not just a sort of nod to recognising that women work in the field, but it's, it's putting it out there, it's showing people who are studying or growing up or this is what a field primatologist looks like. 